This recording is the second part of uh, the introduction to the endocrine system. What I'm going to address is looking at the control of hormonal secretion. So that's what we're going to address in this one. Is kind of as a review though, it's important if you remember reflexes that were introduced in AMP1 because endocrine reflexes are um, control endocrine activity. So endocrine reflexes are involved in control of hormonal secretions. So if you remember some terms, some terminology, is you have some sort of variable, something that's changed. And if we have some sort of stimuli or stimulus that can cause something to change, we have a receptor that can detect that change. And that receptor then tells a control center, hey, something has happened. That control center knows what to do in response to that. And it will kind of tell various effectors what to do in response to that particular change. And it does involve that information from the receptor has to get to the control center via an afferent pathway. The control center will tell the effectors what to do via an efferent pathway. So hopefully you remember that from AMP1 because those terms are going to keep coming back. So let's apply it to the endocrine system here. So you have some sort of stimulus that caused a change in that variable. The receptor detect that change. And that receptor went and told the control center something has changed. And it traveled by an afferent pathway. The control center knows what to do. Typically, it's going to be an endocrine organ. And what's going to happen in response is we're going to release a hormone, which is going to be released into the bloodstream. That will be our efferent pathway. And we'll have the targets will be effectors. And those effectors will have carry out certain responses. And what you'll notice on here is you see that feedback. Well, most but not all hormones are subject to negative feedback regulation where the, um, the response that you get will oppose what the stimulus was. So for example, if blood glucose levels went up, the response would be to get the blood glucose back down. So typically you have this negative feedback regulation, which you see right here. So you eat, blood glucose levels go up, the pancreas detects it. So in this case, the pancreas is our integration center. So it senses, and actually the receptors, believe it or not, are located in the pancreas, and it detects that the blood glucose levels went up. What happens is Insulin is going to be released in response to it. It's going to travel in your bloodstream, go and target a number of different target cells. Ultimately, it's going to get the blood glucose levels back down. It's going to tell certain cells, take it up, use it for energy, store it away from later. So, And then what happens in response to that, when the blood glucose levels go back down, the insulin secretion will go down. So it's subject to negative feedback regulation. There are a couple examples of positive feedback regulation, and we'll talk about that um, when that time comes. Now, what are the various type of stimuli generically that can cause these endocrine reflexes that trigger a response? Well, one of them you have is humoral stimuli. So what is humoral stimuli? It's where you have a change in the composition of your extracellular fluid. So in this example, let's give you is blood calcium levels in the blood, or say calcium levels in the blood are too low. Well, the parathyroid glands, which you see here, these four glands here, they have calcium sensors and the, the blood calcium levels get too low. The response is to release parathyroid hormone into the bloodstream. The job of parathyroid hormone is to get the blood calcium levels back up. So I'm showing you again that negative feedback regulation. So parathyroid hormone secretion is subject to what we refer to as hormonal 
stimulate. It's, it, and specifically, it's low blood calcium levels. Then we have things that are subject to neural stimuli. So in this case, the best example is the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine, these are the abbreviations for it, from the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla is in the center of the adrenal gland. That is a modified sympathetic ganglion. So here, so remember a ganglion is a group of cell bodies that's outside of the central nervous system. Well, this used to have pretty much postganglionic neurons, but the dendrites and the axons have pretty much gone away. So you're kind of left pretty much more with cell bodies. In response to stimula stimulation by these preganglionic fibers, it's going to stimulate the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. So the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine by the adrenal medulla is subject to stimulation by the nervous system. Um, there is an uh, example also where you can have some neural stimulation, but it's not um, as significant as other means would be secretion of insulin, believe it or not. Um, but insulin is primarily humoral, changes in blood glucose levels, and specifically blood glucose levels are elevated. Now the last one would be hormonal. So this is where you have one hormone that's going to affect the secretion of another hormone. And a good example of this is what you're seeing here with the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus secretes hormones that um, will target the anterior pituitary gland. And it, in this case you see with these three, um, it um, stimulates the secretion of hormones. But the, um, there are some hormones that can inhibit the secretion of other, other hormones. So the example you see here is um, the hypothalamus um, actually releases um, something called TRH which then stimulates the secretion of TSH by the pituitary gland, which then travels to the thyroid gland and stimulates the release of T3 and T4. So here you see uh, TSH secretion is subject to control by a hormone, TRH. T3 T4 are also subject to regulation by a hormone, in this case TSH. We're going to look at the, these other ones at a later time, so I don't really talk about that yet. Now, it's important that you understand the difference between um, control by hormones, by the nervous system, as well as humoral. But it's even more important is when we specifically talk about an endocrine organ and the hormones that it produces, that you know specifically what controls the secretion. So if I ask you, for example, what controls the secretion of parathyroid hormone, I don't want you to just say um, humoral stimuli. You need to be specific. You say it's low blood calcium levels would increase the secretion of parathyroid hormone. So you need to be more specific. So this is going to be the last bit of the recording for the introduction to the endocrine system. Next recording you're going to see it's going to look at the role of the hypothalamus and pituitary gland.